Hello, my name's Paulette Bansell and I'm an artist printmaker uh, working in Manchester. So the work I've submitted for the Flourish Ward is all about Bexley Square in Salford. And one afternoon when I was walking around Manchester, I sort of strolled out towards Salford up Chapel Street and saw this solid block of buildings on the right hand side, which made me want to turn into Bexley Square. And I happily spent the next hour there just looking at the buildings, clocking them, taking photographs. And this is what I based this set of work on. I learnt afterwards it has um, historical references to um, the workers' movement in 1931. And apparently they reenact this, this event annually and there's a big procession and everything and they have the red flags and sort of stuff in the square. So that made me think about using the red sort of square in the piece called Chaos at Bexley Square that kind of prompted maybe using the red because most of the imagery for this project was black and white. When Martin did the, um, the video of the Flourish exhibition, um, when he got to my bit, he mentioned that the shop fronts reminded of him of the sorts of things that were currently happening in lockdown where everything's shut down. And that's also something I've been recording. So during lockdown, I have taken loads of photographs again of my local area. I mean, obviously the beginning, I was out walking most days. So I passed these buildings every day and they were all locked down. So I've got um, a lot of images now that I will actually be developing into new work. Um, when I was working on the Bexley Square series, I produced uh, the work through etching and I produced for the biggest print that I did, I had 17 different plates. So when I did the prints, I'd often got 17 uh, plates on the press all at one time. So the chances of stuff going wrong was, was highly probable. Um, and I did have lots of mistakes, lots of things happened like plates would move or I would have put one of my etching plates upside down and then printed the whole lot. It takes about three and a half hours to, to ink up 17 plates. So one mistake and then that's just a wasted morning and then I've got to start again. So, but in printmaking, that's, that's what's so fun because lots of stuff like that happens. And when you do things like that, you really learn from mistakes or things that happen accidentally can be extremely useful. You learn the most about your work by the things that you do wrong. In addition to the larger pieces in the exhibition, I've done lots of small prints from individual plates and I've played around with lots of different variations of that set of plates in lots of different ways. Um, and even recently I got some of the plates out again and um, I decided to enter this secret postcard show which is a fundraiser for the Coppola Gallery in Sheffield. And I started off with printing, they had to be postcard size prints, so I printed the top half from the plates and then I, I brought them back upstairs and then started to work on collage. So that's kind of preempted a series of work. I really quite like the results from those two prints, so I think I'm going to do a whole series of those now. So I probably should say just a little bit about artists that probably influenced me or people I really like looking at. I mean, most printmakers look at loads of different kinds of printmaking work and there's so many printmakers that are so fabulous that it's really difficult to pinpoint people but people like um, Huey O'Donoghue, Prinella Clough, Howard Hodgkin, Eduardo Chilida, Barbara Ray, um, Henrietta Corbett, Ross Loveday, those are printmakers I really like but probably I tend to look back mostly at people like Robert Rauschenberg he was a prolific artist and I first saw his work in Bilbao probably in the early 90s when we took students on a field trip there and we saw this two furlong piece which was absolutely massive it took over the whole of the downstairs gallery at the Guggenheim and I think it's the sheer scale of his work that actually stays with you but it's the juxtaposition of images and the way he puts different processes and different images together that I really like. And I look at his books a lot. I just keep going back and having another look at them. So another person that I've 
I've probably looked at since my early days in textile design is Elizabeth Blackadder and I particularly like her watercolours and if you see them close up they are really exquisite. Um, but it's the compositions where she, mostly the, the work she did on Japanese still lives that I really like because she moves images around on the page um, and again probably it's the composition, the strong composition that I'm looking at um, and I do have quite a lot of reference material on her that I've collected over the years. More recently I've been looking at the work of Nazreen Mohammadi and Zarina Hashimi. I discovered their work um, on a trip to New York, both in exhibitions. Um, Nazreen tends, works a lot with um, geometry and architecture and she, she's done a lot of work with lines receding away into space. Um, very delicate and very beautiful work. And all the stuff I've been sort of looking at on pavements inspires me to maybe do a lot more linear work in the future. Serena's work, um, she's a woodcut artist, so um, her work was all based on a project called Four Walls. And the pieces were very small scale and they were all based on the plans and structures to do with the house. And the, the woodcuts were very small scale and very beautiful. And as I've been coming back to collage more recently, I just got all my old books out on Kirchfitters, who I've sort of worshipped for years. I think he was a great, prolific um, artist, always working in collage from, say, the 1930s. Um, and it's probably because he was working in that period, the colours all tend to be muted. So um, I've been recently having another look, revisiting his work. As a printmaker, I tend to work experimentally, intuitively, and probably semi-ordered all at the same time. My starting points are usually a sense of place, where I am, and I tend to do that outside. So I walk around the local neighbourhood a lot, and as I walk around, I record things through photography. I also record things when I travel. I tend to home in on probably linear, grid-like structures. I also like really uh, broken buildings, decaying structures that are falling down. I also look down a lot. So I often look at the pavement and I often record what's underneath me. I've done a, a, an earlier set of work just on pavements. I've got hundreds of photographs of pavements and that's something that I will keep returning back to. So when I get back to the studio, I'll then uh, take all the photographs off the camera, put them onto Photoshop. I'll cut and paste the pictures. Um, sometimes then I will change the pictures around, change the compositions, abstract things, reconstruct stuff, um, make new images, and then I might print off those images. Uh, or I might just print a load of photographs off when I get back and then put a few together and then start working from those photographs all at once, straight onto a plate. The print processes I've adopted are mainly etching monoprint with carborundum and dry point. I did a complete print paint makers course at Hotbed Press ooh, a few years ago now and on that course we learned all different aspects of uh, printmaking techniques but my work seems to suit monoprinting and etching. I tend to draw directly onto a plate and then um, first of all with line and then I start working with aquatint and sometimes I'll work with uh, sugar lift if I want more abstract mark making but a lot of the work I do is linear so I do start mostly with lines. I tend to print at Hotbed Press in Salford um, but during lockdown um, I managed to acquire a new press so um, I've been able to set up a studio space um, at home, so I've got a workspace upstairs where I tend to do um, thinking and collage work and then downstairs I've got another studio space where I, I've got my press and a workbench. So the work I've been working on recently has been, um, I've got a drawer full of prints. I've just got hundreds of prints discarded or ghost prints and I don't like waste, so I've decided that I would do something with these um, wasted prints. 
prior to lockdown, I was working on a series of prints uh, from a journey and walk around um, from a holiday in Goa. So the neighbourhood of Panjim was where I focused on because there was an immense juxtaposition of colour and linear structures that I could focus in on. And that's what I've been doing in these prints. So I tend to roll colour straight onto the, um, uh, the discarded prints uh, in various stages, let it dry and put other colours on. And then I've been making some new plates, um, some dry point plates, linear plates and carborundum plates. And then I've been experimenting with printing those on top of the prints. So it's a very kind of long winded process because I'll do something, it'll need to dry for a couple of days, put it back, put it in the stack, put it back onto the press, do something else with it until I'm happy with the composition. And then I'll come back upstairs um, and then start some collage work. I wanted to do collage for a really long time. I've been saving materials for collage, old tickets, tons of different kinds of paper, I save boxes, loads of stuff. Um, and that's, that's the material I tend to use on top of the collage pieces.